Hello guys, Lucky Jake here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And so for today, we are having a bad weather on board, and that means we are not allowed to go out. So we are only allowed to work inside the accommodation and in the engine room. So for today's vlog, I'm going to show you all the things that I did during this bad weather. We fixed around five troubles in one day. So I'm going to show you on what are the things I did. And so come and join me in this new learning. We are on the way to Taiwan when we had this bad weather. There is a tropical depression near to this coast, so we are only allowed to work inside. And one of the troubles we are having is this oil mist detection system of one of our generators. The oil mist system is giving shutdown alarm to our generator and once this generator number 4 is on load, then we are having this preferential trip. Since we have the spare, so we have decided to just dismantle the old one and install this new one. Together with me is the third engineer and the motor man and we just installed the whole body and then I have proceeded in changing the wirings. I always see to it as that I will put markings in all of these wirings so that I will not get lost during the transfer of all these wirings. I normally use permanent marker to mark these wires and actually the wires has this numbering but since you have two different sources so they also have the same numbers so it is much better to put your own markings so that you will not get lost so this is the best tip that i can give you and i have proceeded to replacing all the sensor and since this temperature sensor is not included to the new body so i just remove the old temperature sensor and transfer it to the new body and then and then after that, we just connected the whole thing and we tested it. As you can see onto the display, we now have the power and we will just wait for it to normalize and get ready. And then we will test the generator and run it in idle operation. We will not put it on load since we are avoiding to have preferential trip and we are not allowed to go outside. We are avoiding the refrigerated containers to be switched off and we cannot check them if we will have this preferential trip. I asked the third engineer to monitor the generator if it will still have this shutdown alarm and good thing it didn't happen again. And then I have proceeded in checking the refrigerated containers on the cargo hold which we have access on the passageway and one of them is giving this not in range situation wherein our discharge pressure goes up to 15.6 bars and the condenser fan is, is still not running so i tried to turn the condenser fan motors and it is having difficulty to rotate so i suspected that we already have problem with the electrical motor but to be sure I just want to see if the contactors designate this condenser fan motor is activating so that we will lessen the amount of time and effort that we will exert onto this reefer. And as you can see, the contactor for the condenser fan motor is activated and the motor is still not rotating. So we need to replace this electrical motor. So the unit doesn't have alarm and is still continuously running. And you might be wondering why and the reason for that is because we have low ambient temperature and it is not yet reaching this high pressure cut out so now let's proceed in changing this condenser fan motor again before touching any rotating equipment make sure that you isolate the power and completely remove the plug onto the reefer socket to avoid any accident so that is the first thing that you need to do so just be careful since the motor is hot and 
I have already made a separate vlog on how to change this condenser fan motor. So I'll just put the link down below. And so for now, I'll just get the spare electrical motor, bring it to the workshop, remove the fan blade, and then install it to the new electrical motor. And then we will install it back to the refrigerated container. As a technique, install the new electrical motor into the condenser section without the fan blade first so that you will have a lot of access in tightening all of these bolts and you can actually balance it well and then install the fan blade and make sure to install it in balance way so that it will not damage your electrical motor and it will not also touch the cage where the fan blade is installed again as a safety precaution do not try it without putting safety guard as there might be a possibility that the fan blade will get damaged and fly it all around and might hit you and it will cause really a big accident and after that we are now ready to test the unit and after running it for 10 to 15 minutes the unit went in range and then we send this malfunction report to the office after that i proceeded to another troubleshooting which involves our fuel oil settling tank the alarm remains active even if we do not have high level fuel oil so we dismantled the sensor and make sure before removing it that the level is really not in that level or spillage range because we are having this rolling and we need to avoid having this oil spill on board so after that i check the continuity and the operation of the sensor the float switch if it is really activating and deactivating so i used my multimeter and flipped it into resistance mode and check the continuity if it is opening and closing whenever i move the float and as you can see it is responding well so there might be a possibility that this float was just stuck and needs just a little bit of movement and after that we put back the float switch and the alarm was cleared and then we proceeded again to another troubleshooting which involves our freshwater generator the ejector pump is giving this noise so we suspect that we're having problem with the bearings of our electrical motor so we dismantled this electrical motor and make sure that you isolated the power first before removing any connection and you do a test for no voltage so together with me here is our wiper so we will just dismantle this one and put it on the workshop and we will do a uh, motor overhauling. I will make a separate vlog onto this one and show you the proper way on how to overhaul an electrical motor. And the last thing we did is to trace this earth fault on our board. And I have started dropping off the breakers and as you can see, it went actually normal onto the first and second breaker and then I switch back on everything and the low insulation is coming from our engine control console so the big question is is it safe to drop these breakers even the main engine is running the answer is it depends on the setup you have on your engine control console the setup we have in this vessel is that we have two backup power supply for all our equipment connected to this engine control console so when i drop this engine control console breaker nothing has been switched off onto that side and it was just switched off to different supply and the source of this fault is coming from the cargo hold lights and one of the machinery is connected to the, our engine control console my technique in tracing the earth fault i switch off all the breakers first and switch them back 
on one by one and to see which one will cause the earth fault. I do not suggest to do this uh, tracing of earth fault in the engine control console while the main engine is running. I just reviewed the system well that we have multiple power supply and after checking everything it was one of the lube oil purifiers that is causing this earth fault and I have checked I have noticed that one of the solenoid coil is having poor condition and after I removed the wirings and check our earth fault meter it became normal so what I did is just we changed this solenoid coil and cleaned the connection and everything went well so that's it guys i hope you learned something from this video this is your lucky jake saying take care safe sailing and god bless see you on my next vlog